Alrighty. Uh, yeah, welcome. This is uh, Prince of Persia 2008 Epilogue. It's the DLC episode to the 2K Prince of Persia reboot. It's console exclusive until <laughs> Smathlax gets the emulator working, but that's his business, not mine. Um, so yeah, time starts at first movement, so I will count it in. Three, two, one, go. Jumping is marginally faster than just running when you're on flat ground and don't have Elika's help. That is the only time in the game it matters. It's slightly more relevant in the run for the base game. First part of this here, which is actually the only part I did not practice last night, so bless RNG, <laughs> is um, really basic. It's just stuff you would definitely know how to do having played the base game. And of course, you would have played the base game if you have this DLC. Where are you going? Just wall runs and ring runs and all that lovely stuff. There's actually several little movement tricks you can do in this alleyway, but they're all irrelevant. Because you always wind up on the same cycle afterwards anyway, unless you screw up. There's a little, you know, little annoying thing that can happen there where you aim the prince left, but he will instead climb up the fissure. I'm glad it didn't happen that time. Dropping plenty of frames. Only she can harm her father. about we still have to wait for that one blob to go up so even if we had done the movement tricks in the initial alleyway to do it just a little bit faster it would not have mattered because you cannot make a cycle previous to that one and you need to be on the cycle with the one blob going up not the three blobs i mean you can do it with the other cycle but you would have to wait in the middle of that part clearing if, if you did does the frame seem better good Similarly, here we want the two blob cycle, not the one blob cycle. That was even a little bit slow. That right there is a demonstration of really the way to turn, you know, you talk about turning good runs into great runs and great runs into excellent runs. That's one of the ways that you turn a great run into an excellent run is by shorting ring runs. Normally when you do a ring run, the prince will wall run for, I don't precisely know how long it is afterwards, but oftentimes it's not necessary, and you can make the jump to the next part of the parkouring without doing it. And I've tested most every ring in the game. A good way to know when you can do it is when you're going around a corner, except when the double jump afterward would be necessary anyway, so it's kind of one of those things where you just have to know. That one is shortable. These, uh, I call them smoke pillars, or the soldiers of Araman. And if you can attack them before the soldier spawns, they won't spawn and you get to not fight them. I call that. this strat wall is lava, because we're just jumping away from the wall every opportunity we get. It only saves about one second, but it sure does look cool. Sounds like the technical difficulties are mounting. Everything was absolutely fine on my end. Skip right there to die. <laughs> you wanna watch me not get it again? Let's just skip some parkouring. I'm 
actually pretty pleased with myself that I got that first try twice. Because that is one of the more difficult skips in the run. And it doesn't save all that much time. I've never really gone through and timed how much things save. Also, I never run this game with splits, even on just my own stream going for like PVs and stuff, so I really have no idea. Kinda messed that up, but it's fine. Whoa, okay. That would not be fine. <laughs> the mark of Oros. Right. The Uro were here. There's a doorway there. I think we can get across. Yeah, Apollina, the base game's great. Um all due respect to Smathlax. The epilogue is a better run by being uh, completely linear as opposed to the open world-ish base game. It allows for a lot more glitch tech and skips and stuff. There is some run tech that's common to both runs. But with uh, with even more respect to Smathlax, the run for the base game has become a lot better over, say, the past year than it ever used to be. And we'll see that run later in the event. Together. Pretty big skip here to get to this fight arena in the middle of the room. Ordinarily, you would have to go way around the room to do all sorts of crazy parkouring. That demonstrates that enemies can charge at you as well as you at them. It's possible to do this without that charge. That charge there is kind of a safety strat because by winning the charge, you take the enemy out of any buff state they might be in. You know, the enemies can go into various buffs where they're impervious to your sword or critically impervious to Elica. And if you do the Elica attack while they're in that buff, it will knock her unconscious and you have to go revive her. And every combo we do... Oh, that's one thing I didn't mention after the first fight. Every combo we do starts with Elica, so it's good to make sure that they're not in the Elica buff. And you can also just take time to visually make sure, but I've never been good at that. Yeah, there's a long unblockable combo that we will do in every fight against the Morning King except the last one, which I guess just means the first three because there's four. The fourth fight is a little different from the first three. Uh, in the first fight, we did not even do the full combo. The second fight, we will do one full combo. The third fight, we will actually do two and a half combos. Used to only be two. It's faster to do two and a half. And we'll explain why when we get there. All right, time to do some glitches. You set a hang, jump forward, hang off the railing with one hand not on it. That enables us to airwalk. That's a glitch called ledge warping or ledge teleporting that is also used in the base game pretty extensively. Let's just skip some cycle-based nonsense. And I probably didn't need to wait that long, but that's okay. Yeah, who loves glitches? I love glitches. I should be able to just go here, but yeah, always good to make sure. You don't want to grab that fissure there. You want to manually initiate a wall, a uh, uh, wall grind, a grip fall is what it's called in game, because that makes sure this guy down here doesn't spawn. There's a trophy or achievement for killing all of the soldiers of Armin before they spawn. I've read trophy guides and it's considered to be one of the hardest achievements or trophies that this game has. And it's really not. <laughs> you know, I might mess up and spawn one. It's certainly not outside the realm of possibility, but it's really not. And we just did another glitch there. Should have been talking about that. <laughs> This is actually very easy to mess up, this out-of-bounds grip fall. So what we did was we set a hang on the other side of this tower, and then we had to go back to a ledge where we could do a ledge warp, 
and that little fancy jump I did is the correct way to reach that one there because you have to land on it without the pulling yourself up animation. I'm going to wait for this cycle. Oh, that was very close. There's actually several cycles you can complete that on. That was probably the most terrifying one, <laughs> but it worked. So anytime you jump from a height, you want to jump right as you hit the ground, that will skip the recovery frames. And very often simply move you towards where you need to go anyway. Araman is trying to cut us off. It's not lit. Maybe there's some sort of temple. It's not lit, fam. Where we can activate the plate? Sorry, no. had to. Or there's another way out of here. There is nowhere to go. Even <sighs> if we escape here, there is nowhere to run to. I can think of a hundred places. And Armin will follow us to all of them. This is one of my favorite things about the DLC. In the base game, you have to collect hundreds of light seeds to power up the plates. And in the epilogue, Prince just smacks it once. Alright. Coming up on the most punishing skip in the game. If I miss the skip that's coming up, I lose two and a half minutes, and I just have to try it again. <laughs> because it softlocks the game if you miss it. Tried it three times before going live. I was two for three. And there's a case of jumping out of recovery frames straight to where I want to go. The corruption has gone down. There. So you're supposed to turn three levers in this room to make the black ooze go away. We will hopefully turn only just that one. That right there skips not only the recovery frames, but after the recovery frames, there's about a 99% chance that the prince will catch Elika as she falls from the wall, and they'll do one of their cute little quips. Uh, Don't go tripping up now is one of my quote-unquote favorites. Here comes the skip. Bless RNG. We're supposed to continue going around this room, but instead, we will not. We'll just jump in between these magic walls. Well, the one magic wall, the one normal wall, I'm a little too far to the left. And we will do Elika clipping to get through the roof of the magic wall here. There we go. A first try every time. So that is a power plate we're not supposed to be able to hit until turning all three levers. So by turning it, the game assumes we did, and the black ooze is gone. All this for us, Ironman? Hooray, it's a valid run. Second encounter with... Or... Er, second encounter or first encounter? Second encounter, yeah. With this enemy, the shapeshifter. He morphs into two of the enemies from the base game. This is the warrior, the other form is the hunter. 
and you really just line them up with the drops. The first fight's really easy because there's drops at the at every edge of that little disc, or big disc. This one's a little trickier because there's only four, but it's not hard to line them up with them at all. And most of the time, it's scripted whether you're able to charge at the boss or the boss at you when combat begins. There are a few that are random. I call those charge rolls. The only bad part about losing a charge roll, it's a modest time loss, not a big one. The only bad part about it is if the hunter charges you, you have a lot less time to do the QTE to win the charge. It's still perfectly doable, of course, but it's... You know, just, just a little bit monk ass. And sometimes that happens. <laughs> no idea why. Okay. I'm about to go down the normal way. <laughs> There we go. What was so hard about that? Alright. Sneaky little movement uh, optimization coming up here. I was about to call it a trick. It's not even a trick. It's just knowing what to do. We'll jump on the opposite sides of this little shaft. I call everything little. Everything is big. <laughs> this shaft here, but right here. We double jump backwards. We don't have to climb up this fissure. We can just jump back away from it again because of the prince's little scamper move when he gets to the opposite wall that will get him up onto this platform. This right here is the most punishing. Well, it's not right here. It's just after the next fight, but this area is the most punishing parkouring in the game. I have lost runs to it because if you die at the end of the parkour, you know, die in air quotes, of course, because, lol, you can't actually die in this game. What kind of crap game can you not die in? <laughs> Heard that before. But if you die at the end of the parkouring, right before Garden, it loses an amount of time you really can't lose in a PB attempt, unless your PB is god-awful. I do have Reki in this game at 38.43. It's definitely improvable. I, um, short time after getting that run, I had a run that was on pace to beat it by almost a minute that died in the absolute, well, not the absolute last parkouring of the game, but near the end parkouring. Here's another shorting a ring run if I don't die, which I did. Okay. Yeah, whenever I run this at marathons that do donations, I always say like five bucks a death because it's probably going to happen once or twice. Short this ring run, just jump from there. That enables, I think that's kind of a cool effect. Just swinging around on that ring without wall running. You have two choices here. You can short this ring run or not. It's both faster and, oddly enough, safer to do so. I used to think it was more risky, but it's really not. It's really not. And short that wall run just a tiny bit. That is the final soldier of Armin. None of them spawned. There's two skips you can do in the garden room. It's nice to have the older skip as a backup, but we will hopefully do a another airwalk to get to the first goal. And no, Prince, we're not going to see what those cranks do. We're going to set a hang. There's a very specific visual setup I have for this. Left foot pointing at the second beam in, right foot straddling that line. Camera with the end of the beam right in the Prince's neck and jump. And it does, you know, take a little time to set up if you want to get it right, but there, it's pretty consistent. Nice. It's not 
quite over yet. We have to do some fancy jumping between these two pieces of architecture to keep the prince from auto-targeting the ring, which is something he would use to reach this area normally. One of the bars has moved. Let's use the plate and see if we can move the other bars. No, Elika, we will not use the plate. Okay, that's very off target. Yeah. Ordinarily, I don't mind that low on the vines. Yeah, that, that obstructed camera view there is not supposed to happen because that tower is not supposed to be where it is in this position. Thankfully, all you need to do is jump up, so it's very simple. Another thing I usually offer for donations when I do this at a marathon that accepts, accepts them is costume choice. There are alternate costumes for both of the characters, and actually when I loaded the game up to do my practice last night... Skip here. Elika was in the Ferris Sands of Time costume. I decided to change them both back to defaults just to avoid triggering the Sands of Time runners. The Prince's Sands of Time outfit is also on. available. So that went pretty good, actually. We're coming up on the second fight with the Morning King. We will do one entire of our combo that I mentioned earlier to defeat him in this fight. You have to grip fall just a little bit down here before you can jump. Obviously saves a little time to jump as opposed to grip falling all the way down. Araman seeks you. He can seek her, but he's not going to get her. It is you he seeks. State your wish. I wish so this charge is definitely scripted. The king will always charge at you. Move to the right a little bit, and then unleash the combo. And he's dead. If we hadn't moved to the right, as I mentioned, you know, just counterclockwise, I guess, a little bit, around the prince, uh, the combo would have ended up with the Morning King stuck against a wall, and he would have had to do the little wall mini event. And it, it still would have killed him in one combo, but even though he had no health left, you would have had to win that wall mini event to finish the fight. And it's about 10 Let's seconds to here. do one of those. Why don't you take what he has to offer? So spending like one that. second before the fight to save 10 after, Let's definitely, right definitely good arithmetic. Okay. Not too bad so far, and frankly, <laughs> famous last words, frankly all the difficult stuff we is done. And I was going to say we should just hold hands and hope. This is the green plate from the base game. Let's you run on walls and ceilings. I don't know what's a wall and what's a ceiling here. I would love some kind of debug mode where you can like free fly through this area just to see what it looks like when it's obvious which way is up and which way is down. Obviously it's not meant to be viewed that way. It's meant to be viewed as you're running through it, but I just think it would be interesting to see. Three of the four power plates. We already used the red power plate actually. I should have mentioned it then. But three of the four power plates from the base game do appear in the DLC. Thankfully, the yellow plate does not. I always hated the yellow plate. Because it puts, like, a visual distortion effect on the sides of the screen. Obviously, if you know where you're going, it's fine. But it was always problematic for me in my uh, many casual playthroughs of the base game. So these scratches on the, or whatever these are, on the wall ceiling or whatever, I kind of liken them to if you set a map marker in an open world game like GTA, it will show you a way to the next power plate, and it's a way that works, but it may or may not be the best way. You'll notice I'm diverting from them on occasion. I like the green plate the best simply because it's not, oh, just fly for a few seconds to the next plate. And they all have names. I don't, don't remember what they're called. This is a scripted charge as well. The warrior will always charge at you. So you just 
spam Elica combo at him and charge him. This can go wrong pretty quickly if you miss one of those QTEs, but thankfully I don't. See, that is a charge roll. You can potentially charge at the hunter there. It's about a three second time loss for him to charge at you. Nothing too terrible. Doesn't matter what you try, Armin. You're not going to stop us. First you offer me gold, then you try to kill me. Those are sort of mixed messages. Okay. Wow, this has actually gone pretty well. A tomb. I hope that's not an omen. It must be the mausoleum of Achaemenes, king of the Ura when the city fell. He returned to liberate it from Aramin. And they buried him underground? Not much of a reward. He refused to be buried in the city. He felt shame for allowing the city to fall. He was laid to rest in secret. Pilgrims found yeah, I wonder why they didn't give the purple plates uh, an Ormaz name. The other ones are all like Breath of Ormazd, Wings of Ormazd. The purple one's just called Rebound. How are you gonna die in the cause? You can't die in this game. Alright. This is what passes for a puzzle in the DLC. Really need a galaxy brain to solve these. This also low-key kind of breaks a rule of good game design. You want the world to feel like it doesn't exist simply for the player, but this absolutely fails that. It's not a huge complaint, but there's no way the aura would have had rotating wall panels that change if you turn a lever on the opposite side of a giant room. It just makes no sense. It also makes no sense for them to have this power, this rebound power, because the lore is that the Aura were in power, you know, centuries ago, millennia ago, and yet they have a power to restore ruins to pristine conditions, so why would they have that power? I said earlier, the epilogue is the better speedrun. The base game is better on its merits as a game. There's nothing really too interesting here. We're just doing this room the intended way. Feels bad, man. And actually, in Robbie's uh, PB VOD, the Old War Record, which is from a marathon, which is kind of impressive, he mentions that effort had been put into trying to find a skip here. I'm not sure what that's all about. I would certainly love a skip here. This room is very boring and long. the last one, thankfully. And there's a little bit of memory that can happen here. Don't know why. Sometimes you can simply be too low on the wall to grab this ring. Thankfully, it didn't happen there. It looked like it was going to for a split second. I've lost runs to that, and it's a very frustrating thing to lose runs to, let me tell you. Alrighty. This is the 
fight where we will do two and a half combos. You can kill him in two, but two and a half is faster. Again, he'll charge at us. Move to the right. Sounds. You always talk of power. Fair and you always minds. run away. We are getting out of here. Let's get out of here before he comes back. So what we did there, oh, I should talk about this too. I just now discovered a consistent setup for this airwalk. You need the prince's left hand precisely where I placed it. And actually I need to focus here, so I'll talk about the fight in a second. We're getting close. We are almost through this place. So what we did in the fight was block cancel at the end of the combo to allow us to start a new combo right away. It does skip the most damaging hit of the combo, but it's also the longest combo, so the DPS is better. And the skip we did to get here was, quote-unquote, just a... a um, Ledge Warp Airwalk. It was a long one. When I do that one in uh, runs on my normal stream, sometimes people think the stream is dead <laughs> because you're stuck on one visual for quite a long time with repeating sounds even. So there's a funny little visual glitch you can do jumping out of this room. It costs time, though. I was going to do it if the run was bad, but the run has actually been great, so I'm not going to do it. Gotta wait. I could have gone there, but it's all right. Hold on tight. Or better yet, don't. Yeah, the visual glitch you can do jumping out of that last room is that if you jump too soon, it'll just move you to the back of the room for whatever reason. Erica! Helps if you jump. I always screw this skip up, and it's such a small skip. No! <sighs> for some reason, the skip goes okay in practice, and then I can never do it in an actual run. I don't know why. This is all it skips. Yeah, this alleyway here and basically the same bit of memory is the only real mistakes. You know, some things were done slowly in my PB, but these are the only real errors. And you don't have to grip fall here at all, you can just jump down. We can get out through there. We will have reached the other side of the hills. They'll shelter us from autumn for a while. Uh. Elica, go! So get Elica jumped down below. We do not have her for this fight. But we don't need her, thanks to the fact that for this one and only time, we are able to charge the Morning King. Every other time we engage him, he charges us. So we're able to throw him towards the edge, and 
God help you if you don't get that first try. That's all I'm gonna say, because he will block nearly every sword hit you do. I'll charge at us. We win the QTE, jump over him, back away. Charge. Back away there so we don't do an acrobatic attack instead of charging. That is very annoying when that happens. Knock him down. Now down here we'll do our throw combo twice. Uh, okay, messed that up. Might be three times now. <laughs> No, it should only be two, so... Alright, yeah. Mm, only a mm, <laughs> Easy for me to say. Stuck between saying moderate and modest, but only a modest time loss there. Magic won't kill him, swords won't kill him. Spikes on a chair will kill him. A throne. It's potential for a massive frame rate dip here. And kinda. <laughs> All right, that is the last fight. All we have left is parkouring. But yeah, that throw combo, we uh, use that against the hunter in the shapeshifter fights, and we would have also used it if any of the soldiers of Armin had spawned. Of course, none did. And one thing I meant to mention about them is. They have certain spawn triggers. It's not at all random whether they spawn or not. Small time save here by shorting that ring run and manually jumping away from that. So you land right on the green power plate. Saves two seconds. And it doesn't really even look like a strat unless you know the game pretty well. Yeah, the Soldier's Varman can also spawn if you die or take too long in certain areas. Small time save here to just land on that balcony instead of climbing up. But most of them have identifiable spawn triggers that if you don't do them, they won't spawn. I was wrong when I said the spikes on the chair killed him. And actually, there's ring runs in this area that are shortable that I did not short in the world record, which... Every time I go back and watch it, which, not gonna lie, is often, <laughs> I kind of cringe when I get to those parts. This ring run right here is absolutely shortable, and in the world record, I don't. The blue plate marks the beginning of the final parkouring sequence. Are you kidding me? Wow. Rip run. That was stupid. I was not anywhere near the ooze, and it was going down. Anyway, here's a little cool thing with shorting a ring run. It saves frames, if anything, but it gives that camera view, which I think is kind of cool. Because it looks spooky, but it's really not. You just go around the corner and grab the purple power plate. Now, that ring run there is a good example of why that one's not shortable, because you have to double jump to reach the next objective anyway. You always have to double jump after shorting a ring run. So the time save from doing it once is modest at best, but if you get them all, 
it's it's many seconds over the course of the run. All right, time is coming up very soon. Should have mentioned that earlier. And time. We're through. I think we're clear. I couldn't heal him. Arm was too strong. That was not bad at all. I honestly if expected I to now, um Mess up a lot more. We have to get out of here. If we cross the desert, there's a city too. There's one little funny thing I'd love to show off if uh oh GMP. Thank you. It's one little funny thing I'd love to show off if we have time. Helica, you can't do this alone. I know. That is why I must find my people. Sub 40? Nice! What was the time? I I know some people keep timers on their own when they do online runs. I, I don't believe in that. <laughs> I feel like if it wasn't for that quote-unquote death right at the end there, the one that I was saying was bullshit, that it was close to recce pace. Probably not quite recce pace because there were a few mistakes before that. Oh damn, we have to let the credits play. <laughs> if I had skipped out of the cutscene while the cutscene was going on, we could have skipped the credits. 39.45, that'd be awesome. So, yeah, um, can I show off the, yeah, thankfully the credits are short. Thank, can I, uh, show off the Hamam softlock? It's always good for a giggle. I'm so happy it didn't happen during the run. Nobody's telling me I can't. <laughs> so. This is also, of course, the save file I would load up to practice the mom skip. Press L2 or L1 to talk to Elika throughout the game. Elika can only teleport the prince between healed regions. Yeah, they save the little loading screen oh tidbits over from face. the base game. They're largely irrelevant to the epilogue. You can still talk to Elika. She just doesn't have nearly as much to say. Oh yeah, I forgot to say anything about the story for this game. Story, you know... The reason, one of the reasons she might not have as much to say is because she's mad at us for bringing her back to life at the end of the base game. Which, I don't know, it makes sense in context. Okay. So we're heading back to the Hamam. Let's actually do this this time and see if it happens. Okay, he didn't catch her. Usually he catches her. But it's faster anyway to jump there, just to avoid the recovery frames. Now remember how Elika will grab you and save you and pull you to your last safe ground if you fall to your quote-unquote death. That's important here. Come on. Come on. There we go. 
So if we miss the jump or just stand here and do nothing, it disappears. But Elika will save us. She'll put us back on our last safe ground. Oh, but there's nothing here. Oh, but Elika will save us. She'll put us la back on our last safe ground. Oh, but there's nothing there. Oh, but Elika will save us. And the first time this ever happened to me when I was practicing the Hamam skip, I was like, oh my, what the hell just t Oh, I get it. There is no way out of this from within the game. You just have to quit out. Anyway, I think that's pretty good for a giggle. Um, yeah, that's all I got. Thanks so much for having me. Uh, enjoy the rest of the marathon. Lots of love.